Welcome to the Art of Dispute. I am your host, Joe Orsak. And I'm your co-host, Chris Minemeyer. And we agree on pretty much absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> America, you are about to witness three total strangers, a musician, an artist, and a business professional. We brought them together to talk about a really hard subject that they had no clue what it was before they got here. All in the hopes that we can teach you, America, that we can discuss the most controversial topics without being jerks to each other. Imagine that! So stick around, watch the fireworks, because we're about to go live! Welcome to the Art of Dispute! All the stuff that happens before the cameras are rolling, wow. Ah, uh, it's the only show where you can be friended and offended all in the same hour. Because that's how we roll around here. <laughs> we have a problem, America. We have a problem, right? I think we have a problem. Have a problem. It's a problem. Chris, what the heck is our problem? We like to refer to it as the zero to Nazi effect, which is after you post your opinion online, is the time it takes for someone to go from zero to you're a Nazi. And I'm going to go outside and punch your dog and make sure that the world knows you should not be trusted because you have an opinion that somebody doesn't like. Yes, we have a problem. It's a true story. We're trying to fix it right here. Good conversation. Hot topics. We've got a doozy for you today. Another great conversation I'm really looking forward to. And uh, before we jump into the topic today, which is uh, on the screen. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to make my own sound effects. We, we, we haven't afforded the no, sound effects person like, yet. You only do that for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Costing us money. Right, right? Yeah. Uh, so, should the right to vote, should people who vote have skin in the game? Should they be a taxpayer? Should they be a landowner? Should they uh, serve in the military? Uh, is there some prerequisite that they should have in order to gain the privilege to vote? Uh, what do you guys think about that? Chime in. Um, we've got a great discussion going on in the group 24-7. This topic was posted over there, so we're going to be pulling comments from that for the show today. Uh, but before we dive in, shameless plugs and guest introductions. This is the, the guest's exorbitant pay package that they receive. It's all the, all the booze they can drink and a, and a free link to something. So, <laughs> it's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Some people drive all the way from Austin just for that. So, yeah. What? Drinks and a link? I'm in. <laughs> On the road. <laughs> all right. First up, Miss Sandra Kimball. Uh, prime PR. Prime PR. So, you're a PR gal. Right on. So maybe your first and last PR person who's willing to go on this show. <laughs> but, nice. Right? I, I mean, it. it's kind of uh, not typically what we do. Risqué, right. You, you put other people on the, you yeah. know, you're yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. So. yeah. That's cool. I like it. It's very cool. Uh, you can find Miss Sandra here at Justice for Jennifer. Oh, well, that's just actually the, what you're promoting. That's what I'm promoting. Justice for Jennifer. Uh, L-U-C-E. L U C E Lucia dot com. Justice yes. for Jennifer Lucia dot com. I remember seeing something about that yeah. uh, in the media. She was uh, uh, well, she was found dead, right? Right. And and at first it was just kind of written off as a suicide or something like that. But there's a lot of people that feel like that was highly suspect. Right. So we're so. all pending right now and hoping to get more attention to it. And uh, we think that maybe the perpetrator that we might think is possibly responsible. That's all you know, all over the website. Um, has a lot of history and ties to Houston and Texas City, so that's part of the reason I'd like to call some attention to it today. Gotcha. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll throw that link up. It's going to be throughout the show, so you will have it there. Thanks. One funny thing about Sandra that most people don't know. Now, you had a long paragraph. And I just deleted that, yeah. yeah it's all right. <laughs> uh, oh, you changed it. I thought that was really funny, though. Uh, the, the short version of it was she would come home and, like, just download her day to her little kids. <laughs> <laughs> All Every the day. media lingo and everything else, and her kids are like, yeah, Mom, I don't care. <laughs> They're like nodding and going, uh-huh, uh -huh. you got to feed us now? <laughs> That's fascinating, Mom. Where's the mac and cheese? I, I, just, I do it anyway. Even though I know it's just like, well, shh, I just do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. But this is really good, too, though. This is good. 
She says, I've never driven a moped that I didn't wreck. <laughs> but Remind how many, me how many times. A moped. <laughs> a, a client, and this, this is long after the history of, of wrecking mopeds and scars to prove it, but I've one time hit a volleyball team. Oh, that's great. And there were a lot of witnesses. Um, wow. But I, today, Just check I actually. Out. Six on t- <laughs> Just check them out. I actually represent a moped company now. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't let me drive. Don't say it out loud. Oh. <laughs> wow. I'm banned. So that's can, good stuff. No, no you can't stuff. drive that. All right. <clears throat> Billy. Billy Mahaffey. Mahaffey. That's correct, Mahaffey. Mahaffey. Yes. I caught myself there. I don't even know why I said Haffey. <laughs> that when, name gets butchered a lot. It's yeah. Okay. Don't, don't worry about it. I, I knew it was Mahaffey, too. I think I've never said it right. No. Um, Officer God is his band name, and that's O-F-F-I-S-I-R, Officer God. So lots of good stuff. Billy is a returning veteran on the show. He's been on us uh, several times. Mm-hmm. This is my fourth yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, fourth time. And I think you, were you on both shows? I believe you were on the Wine No Wine yes. show and the Artist Edition show back before we had two shows. A, a, little, a little bit of show history there for the show buffs. Uh, that know that sort of thing. It was a very small crowd that, that made it to both shows. So. All that content still available on YouTube. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Shameless plug. The good old days. Shameless plug for the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The good old days. And wow, one funny thing days. about you is a question mark. So, <laughs> apparently that's his thing. So. All of it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a living joke. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to have to, I, like, we have to get some dirt on Billy. If he <laughs> won't provide something funny, we're going to dig up something funny. So. Fake news. Yeah, fake, we'll make it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one funny thing about Billy is uh, he loves to tango wearing tutus. You really got me on that one. Yeah, you yeah. Pegged, you pegged it's, my it's, number. It is a uh, little known fact. He's an expert tango yes. dancer. Uh, and his favorite outfit is a tutu to wear while he does that. So there you go. Little known fact. Mallory can attest to I'm that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Best I could do on the fly. I don't know. I'm easy. It was okay. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> Next up, Tempest Williams. Tempest the Artist. Yeah, I, I like that. Tempest the Artist Art Company. Uh, and Olivier Collection. Is Olivier. Your, Olivier. 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 That's that. That's what that little line above the E means. Mm-hmm. Huh? I'm gonna have to make sure. Right. Wow. Yep. The four. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be professional. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody. We're working on it. We're working on it. Nobody gets it right. Oh, yeah, get Don't try this at home. We are professionals. <laughs> I get olive, olive. Wait, it's, it's Olivier. Olivier. Okay. It's French. Yeah. 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 I like it. Yeah. So. Olivier Collection, uh, and that's with a K, oliviercollection.com. It'll be somewhere over there. Ten dollars. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this, is, this show's getting expensive fast. <laughs> ah, there's ten right there. <laughs> One funny thing about Tempest. I am super clumsy. I lose count over the number of times that I trip over my own feet in a day. Yeah. <laughs> so this is something that happens it's daily. Yeah. <laughs> so my day job, I work uh, in pharmaceuticals. I'll be walking around, people like, what did you trip over? Don't worry about it, there's a lime right there. <laughs> lime over. There we have it. over my own feet. <laughs> All right. So don't drive up that either. Yeah, yeah you two are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm questionable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. yeah, Billy is questionable. There's, there's the funny thing about him with a little question mark. <laughs> All right. So I gotta ask. We need the one minute uh, bullet point thought on the conversation. Um, should those who vote have skin in the game? Whoa, dude! What a great question. Yes, I thought so myself. I cannot. W- How much does it cost you to watch TV? The average household pays between $100 and $150 every month. Finally fed up with the rising cost of cable and satellite? Cut the cord and start watching the channels you want at a fraction of the cost. With iXQ TV, you'll have access to thousands of live TV channels, including sports, movies, news, 
premium networks, kids' channels, and even local channels for as low as $39 a month. Stream in HD on your TV, tablet, phone, or even computer with multiple devices streaming at the same time. IXQ TV requires no contracts or credit checks, no installation or cancellation fees, no bogus surcharges or hidden fees. $39 a month means $39 a month. Say goodbye to high cable bills forever. Visit MyCableBillStinks.com today. Just give me your one minute, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, bullet point idea, don't debate each other yet. Keep this a safe. Yes. To what extent? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> to what extent, I'm not sure. But I do think there's some version of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you will, on our voting process currently, I think we need to restore it by giving it more absent privilege versus just something anybody and everybody who physically is here gets. Hmm. Okay. I like that word, sanctity. Thanks. It, it is a, a very special thing. To, to, to vote in, and uh, I, I do think you're right on that. I think that it is something that is very yeah, here, here, your opinion. underestimated on the value. <laughs> That's what I'm so here for. a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. So I feel torn on this topic, but, but as, as I was saying earlier in uh, the pre-conversation, I believe that if I'm going to play devil's advocate, I would assert that there should be some sort of qualifying factor uh, akin to like taking the citizenship test. Uh, in, the, in the event that you want to become a citizen, there's an extensive test uh, to determine if you're uh, a qualified human being to be part of our culture. And maybe that sort of uh, assertion is uh, the same with, with voting. Do you actually have the wherewithal and the know-how to uh, maintain a reputable uh, you know, stance in the culture? Yeah. I think there should be some guidelines, but I don't think that you should necessarily have some type of skin in the game to be able to vote if you do, in fact, live here. Okay. No, we have. I know this is a topic that we had tons of dialogue in the group. Uh, John Hicks in the group said, in like all capitals, I do not like the idea of non-citizens voting. <laughs> Non-citizens. Uh, I said, whether they're here legally or not, I think citizenship should be a qualifier. Now let me ask this, how do you feel about letting felons vote? Um, absolutely, I agree with John. Uh, we should not have any non-citizens voting in our elections. Um, we, while we are a country of immigrants, we're a country of legal immigrants. Um, my family is a, a good indication of that. We escaped a really horrific socialistic empire to get here, and we really, really appreciate the rights that we have. Personally, I have a lot of immigrant friends, and they are some of the most patriotic people that I know. Uh, they're so appreciative of being here. Um, but yeah, it should be limited to actual citizens, and, and, and should we maybe uh, work on our, our, our path to citizenship a little bit. I'm sure we can we can make that easier, but we already take in more citizen, more immigrants than any other country by far. So, you know, how much is too much? How much can we actually sustain? I don't know, but um, in terms of felons, I mean, I think once you do your time, you've done your time, and you should you should have a right to vote. Hmm. Okay. So there's, there's a, a due process to the concept of obtaining citizenship. Uh, when, when it comes down to the idea of whether or not citizens should uh, be the only ones that are allowed to vote, that, that is the circumstance that we're under. Um, enforcement. Now, <laughs> now, enforcement is another thing. Right. Uh, the, the idea is should you have to show your ID uh, when you go and, and vote, uh, that, that's been a point of contention. Um, also, uh, you know, how do you how do you qualify a person uh, as a citizen in, in that regard? You know, because you're able to obtain a photo ID even as a non-citizen here in Texas, mm -hmm. Texas. Uh, you know, so I I, I know that um, that's been a point of contention for people. As a libertarian, I personally believe now I, this is a little bit differs from what I said initially uh, that borders are imaginary well, lines. Questionable. Exactly. Uh, no, borders are imaginary lines. Um, your, your participation in this country uh, is a lot more important to me than whether or not you're actually a citizen. 
Um, the qualifying factor would be: Are you able to? Uh, are you able to assert some sort of understanding of American culture? In my opinion, uh, so you know whether or not it's about citizenship, I I, I would kind of disagree with the concept, are, are, but are you a contributing member of society? Are you able to understand our values? Are you able to uh, immerse yourself in the culture to the degree that you can explain what American values actually are? Uh, and beyond that, a little bit about uh, you know the, the, the three branches of government, et cetera, what, what you would need to know in order to actually become a citizen. Um, I, I, I'm not a big advocate of enforcement on those sorts of things as a libertarian. I, I believe that there is a concept of liberty that should be, um, you know, based off of natural law, and that was the that was the foundation for what you know the the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Uh, those are uh, wonderful concepts that were asserted, but using them as a um, authoritarian way to enforce things, uh, I've always felt like was a slippery slope. Um, now, whether or not felons should be able to vote, I, I think that uh, you know the same the same applies there. Um, if you are a uh, viable member of our society and, and you're uh, aware of the values of our culture, why would you not be able to vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like I said before, I always go back to history. <coughs> I would question a government that came into a particular area, particular land, and you took over that land in not such a legal manner and completely change the dynamics of what those people were originally doing, how can you say that people that may have come from those same cultures but maybe not living in this country can't come here and vote when you actually took away certain rights for those, from those people that they had when they were already had their government established here, whatever that may look like. So how can you, in the present day, say that, okay, these same people don't have the right to vote here because they don't have a legal document, a piece of paper that says, hey, I'm a citizen here, citizen in this country. So I feel like if Native if it, Americans would have a lot to say absolutely. about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole other topic. However, I feel that there should be certain guidelines because you do have a lot of people that aren't of sound mind, that aren't in, intelligent enough to make decisions that are for the greater good. So I feel like it should be based off of logistics, really. Can this person make a decision not just based on personal gain, but something that's, that's right for the greater good, that's good for all people? Um, now going to the issue of felons being able to vote. I feel like if they didn't commit a crime that's morally incorrect or something that didn't cause harm to other people, per se, let's say for instance murder or doing something to a child or to an elder or to a woman that was just absolutely, <coughs> in my opinion, unforgivable. You're I feel talking like those, about victimless crimes. Right. Yeah. So if it wasn't involving another human being, I think those people should be allowed to vote. Now the others, we need to do a test maybe to see where their mindset is at the present day after they've committed these crimes and they've maybe had some type of rehabilitation, decide then whether or not they should be able to vote. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, you know, I, I, the, you had one comment that I, I, I you know, it's, it's, I've heard a lot in the Native American thing, that sort of thing. Um, you know, a question I always have for that situation is that, that um, the Native Americans pick even a tribe. Even the Moors. Uh, huh? Even, even further than the Native Americans, if you look at the Moors, there were Africans that were here prior to the transatlantic slave trade. French, the French uh, and uh, the, um, New Orleans area, all the French people. The, the and this is, I, I, I lean liber strongly, lean libertarian as well. Um, so Bill and I agree on lots of stuff, uh, uh, even though we come from a very different point of view. Uh, but uh, my question would be, is that there's a functional aspect of society, right? Mm -hmm. there, so there's a lot of times where I 100% agree philosophically, philosophically with a, a, a position, but in practice, mm -hmm. you end up with well, having to come up with a set of rules that everybody agrees to play by. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's one thing to kind of say, I want it to be libertarian and, and everybody just kind of be free to do what you will. Um, but we end up with a situation where it's like, we have to have some order to the, the world around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you know, it's like the troll, so to speak, in social media, whose their whole MO is just that they enjoy jacking with the system. Sowing discord. Yeah. Sowing discord, right? right? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that person, mm -hmm. then you can leave a lot of things just open to everybody do what you want. I think Mickey Mouse is like, gets 20,000 20, votes. I'm not sure the number, but it's some ridiculous number of votes okay. right in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. right. And so my, my question would be that, you know, it, it, before America 
uh, everybody kind of likes to look at the Indians and, as like uh, like almost some sort of an idealistic kumbaya. Everybody's singing around, holding hands, and you know, playing guitar and smoking weed together, kind of a thing. Uh, but they were running around Didn't killing each other night? as much or more than than the next crew who came in. The, the the sum total of human history is war, right? And so invariably, you end up with a dominant culture, like it or not. It's it's just the way it works. Um, so. At some point, we have to ask the question that we have a, a, a culture, we have laws, we have rules here, and how much do we want to require people to say, I'm going to play along or you're not welcome? Yeah. Um, and, and that's where this comes in with the vote. But we'll have to get to that question and the answers after this break because we got to pay for the lights and the booze. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Art of Dispute and the Innuendo Off-Air Hour. <laughs> uh, Randall Revere in the group, he said, uh, on this question, we're talking about this, you know, skin game voting, he said, if we are talking about who should vote, clearly we are asking the question, who is voting in such a way that helps manage the system and in aggregate creates a beneficial situation? So he, he's wanting to know, you know, it's like, is, is this being productive? Uh, is it helping the system, right? Um, and I, I think that was kind of, you know, what you were getting at earlier where you were talking about, I don't really care if they're citizens so much as do they understand the show. The question really speaks to my point, actually. I, yeah. I completely agree with that. My, my thought on, on that actually is, as a result of, uh, of the game that we're playing when we do the politics thing, there's the, uh, the buying and selling of votes that, that's going on. We have, uh, you know, basically, you vote for me, we'll give you the handout that, you, that you're hoping for. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you, you vote for me, and we'll give you the security that you're hoping for. You vote for me, and so on and so forth. Promise, Pander. insert here, right? Pander. Exactly, pandering, yeah. precisely. So uh, wh where I'm at on this is, how much of what we're voting for is actually functional for us, and how, uh, how much of uh, what is being um, enacted is actually something that hasn't already been done uh, and isn't just playing uh, you know, two particular mindsets. A and the idea is if we are getting people in uh, office that are more representative of the general population, that's a positive thing. Uh, it should just be that the general population that's allowed to uh, be involved in the process are able to qualify themselves in some way that shows that they're actually trying to assert something uh, positive and productive. Okay. I can go either one of you guys. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, like I said before, I think if it's about personal gain, then that should be taken into question. And I think a lot of times the voting system is based on what is good for this particular group of people or what can I get from you if I vote for you. And I feel like it should never be about that. It should be what's, what's good for the citizens as a whole, the citizens of this country as a whole. And that's what it should be based upon, in my personal opinion. But if you want to just take it a step further, if we get to the five system or like you said, the green game, um, there's a small percentage of things that we actually can vote on because you get into certain things as far as tax breaks or certain things that are evolving the, the entire electoral process, all the citizens aren't involved in that. So you have people that have certain positions of power and they're voting on these things based on what's going to be better for them. And they completely disregard the rest of their citizens. So I feel like that whole system should be restructured because like I said before, sometimes it's for personal gain and it's it's more geared towards <coughs> the people that have been lobbied. Right. And the one percenters and 
people that have a certain financial status in this country. That's who sees the most benefit from the voting system, I believe, in this country. Okay. So I think that the question is kind of also saying who's really we're, – we're, we're limiting participation p potentially by mm -hmm. doing this. It's not a PC thing we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And who's really going to maintain the status quo or the establishment, right? I am so anti-establishment, it's not even funny. But we have to have some protections in place. And like I said earlier, make voting more of a privilege, not – it's not a right. There is actually no constitutional right to vote. We don't have a constitutional right to vote. Uh, it's because not everybody had that right to make it happen. Right. So, so with 30 million today, what we estimate are 30 million illegal immigrants in this country. I just think we have. I, I think that's it. You know. I'll, I'll give you an interesting uh, aspect of the concept. To that, to your point. Uh, there was a time when, when women didn't vote. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't know the history, um, many women will say now how misogynistic that was. And, and uh, it was a, just a male-dominated patriarchal system and all that sort of thing. It was totally not the case. The biggest uh, proponents to be against the vote for women was women. Because at the time, mm -hmm. the the service required uh, to vote uh, was demanded and the biggest opponents to women getting the vote at the time yeah. were women so understanding a little bit of history uh, about it sometimes changes a view mm -hmm. and I, I'm saying that to kind of to your point and saying we've kind of lost the sense of what a great privilege it is to get to vote uh, and so consequently, understanding the system. And I made the kind of the joke about, uh, it's like a, you know, a builder saying to the general public, you get to come in and have an opinion on the structure and the foundation. And if you have no clue, you're like, well, you know, I don't like the idea that we, you know, we use cement, we should just build on the ground. You know, because I want to be able to walk on the dirt and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very into nature. And so, you know, I want to be barefoot and, and, the, and the person's going, Okay, there's a function to building a foundation. There's a, there's a point to that. If you don't understand the point, you have no way to appreciate the value of it. If you don't understand what a load-bearing beam is, you, you can't have appreciate the value of it. And so if you don't understand yeah. three branches of government and yeah. what each branch does and, and what their function and purpose is, then it's very easy to go in and pick and choose laws you don't like and say, well, this shouldn't be there and this, that, et cetera. Um, it, it, so many people don't understand the Second Amendment. If I ever hear another person say, why do you need that gun to hunt with? Uh, I'm, I'm like, uh, well, That is literally not what it is about. Yes! <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing! Ooh, dang! They're bringing the heat. It's getting so hot. I wonder what they're going to say. existence of that is so that we can overturn the a tyrannical government if necessary <laughs> absolutely and if you don't understand that then it's easy to say well we should limit the access to them that you're coming to it from a place of well the only reason they wanted is to hunt animals and that's stupid uh, so I'm gonna limit access to it meanwhile that person's going yeah no the only person I want to hunt is a tyrant uh, you know, like. <laughs> well, so, so, so to that point, uh, th this is an interesting thought that I'd like to throw in. We, we don't choose to be born 
and we don't choose where we were born. Right. Uh, where and, where and, I was going with the and, whole thing is, I, I'd love to chime in real quick. Yeah. Uh, just a human test would be great for voting, just to make sure that they're human, just like you would if you were, uh, you know, on Google signing in for the third time or whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, making sure that we're not getting fake votes from dead people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and really cracking down on making like vote and vote off. Yeah, well, the actual <laughs> those the, what's going on already. Uh, we need to actually uh, we need to put. I'm sorry, police and not police, but enforce our of what we already have in place. What we're not doing. So if we would enforce that you need to be a citizen and that you uh, you know can't vote twice and like right. all these things that are really screwing up our voting process I don't think that the skin in the game would be so much of an issue I, I, I actually very much agree with that that's a, that's a great I, I want to make one quick question no brief but uh, not question <laughs> statement based on what you said about the foundation because I think that's what we're lacking in this country is the foundation in our mm -hmm. educational system we've lost all civics yeah yeah so, yeah. yeah there yeah. we go and then how do social we, studies social studies there's none right so yeah. People are not educated. Our citizens are less educated than people coming into this country. How do y'all feel about class prior to vote? You must do a online course or go to a like a library that puts on a. Hey, this is who's. This kind of goes to the passing running. a test. This is sort of the concept that not, I'm asserting. But it's at least yeah. giving them an option to go learn. You know what they're about to go vote for, but instead of just going look. Good luck finding what you need to vote for. Good yeah. luck on this test. Libertarian yeah. guy <laughs> says it shouldn't be a requirement, but it should be available. Uh, and and in and in, right. in, in, and in that, do that. Exactly. And here's and here's the qualifier. So you you go in, you vote, you have to answer some questions that are related to citizenship, and then you go forward. Uh, I, I like the idea of the human test to qualify that you're actually uh, an individual that hasn't voted previously in the same election in some kind of way to, right, to not, verify. You're not, you're I think that depends on like if you same. believe people can be, if people can change. I mean, I believe people can change. I believe people can, I think you can kill someone at a young age and I think you can I think you're right, but I also change. think that you lost your right to vote when you yeah. made that decision, you know? But the people that are putting these same laws in place for voting have committed some of those same crimes, but they went about it in a different way. They played chess versus checkers, so they mm. found a different way to get around that. And there's always going to be that. There's always going to be a, a, another way around everything. I, man, I don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't know. I would come from the place of, you know, you're assigned a penalty based on the crime, and... The, the penalty is the debt you pay to society. So uh, I'm like, if the, the the penalty was 20 years in prison, and that, you spend 20 years in prison, then you're done. It's almost right. like double jeopardy, in yeah. a sense. Right, right. Yeah. You, you, you've been you're charged. You're paying a penalty. With, exactly, you've been charged twice. with a crime, you're paying the penalty, uh, yeah. that, that's, that's your debt, and yeah. then you're being Man. charged yet again and caused to... Uh, I, I gotta be honest, I'm still dwelling on this idea because it was a new thing for me. I'm like, imagine a system where it's and uh, I, you know we can talk more. Uh, I'm kind of interested in your idea on the morality side of it, uh, but for me, uh, the the very basics is to say I understand the structure of the government that I live under and the laws mm -hmm. that apply, right? And if you don't, then you have no business voting for people. Right. To, on changing those laws. We live in a right. country where they just so, floated the idea from the Democrat that Party that 16-year-olds uh, should be able to vote. Yeah, yeah. There, and there's we a, get a great example. The electoral college. Exactly. And, so, and, and, yeah, and the, 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 the idea is... If you is, can explain to me why the electoral college exists, in other words, you know what, I'm, I'm perfectly fine mm -hmm. with you saying you want to change the electoral college. Perfectly fine with it. But you have to explain to me why it exists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? If you can tell me a in a functional, intelligent way, why it exists, and then say, I don't think it should exist, and here's my ideas why, and you get enough people to agree with you, mm -hmm. fine. That's what our government, our, we have a right. system for changing the rules if you don't like the rules, right? Yeah, That's but, but if you have no freaking clue what the said, rules are, you have no business voting on people to change the rules. Well, they're, right? they're finding ways so, around it in, in, in states where it's uh, mandatory to have uh, an ID to be able to vote. We, we've got we've got dead people voting. Right. 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 Another still question. Gonna, I'm still going to own my gun. It's illegal to murder <laughs> someone. Did you know that? <laughs> Another question from the... Uh, <laughs> From the gr yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, that's, that's my joke when people start talking about gun laws. I'm saying, you know what? I've got the answer. 
got the answer. Let's just make it illegal to kill people. Exactly. <laughs> right? that's, that's as soon as we get that law in place, argument. everybody will stop. Right? right? <laughs> so there we go. Fixed. Uh, Jesse Kern in the group said she was not, and I remember from other comments, she wasn't so much on board with the, uh, the, the uh, you know, having skin in the game for voters, but she said, should Congress be vetted for their right to vote on legislation? This is another spin on something that I actually also like because I'm like, you know, the test thing. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a big fan on a person demonstrating at least a basic knowledge of the game. Right? I'm not even talking extensive knowledge. How many how many branches of government are there? Two. Okay, you can't vote. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you seen the Ocasio-Cortez yes. memes? Oh, yes. I know. It, it's, it's insane. She couldn't even get the names of the branches right. I, I mean, and, and she's running the government. She's she's there voting on stuff. She she was like, and I can't wait to get into Sign office so bills. I can start signing the bills. I'm like, yeah, you don't do that. That's not in, that's not in your job description. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, so should there be a test? Let's and this is we got to take it home. This is like the final two minutes. Yes. So yes. how about you know if there's not a test for the citizens, should there be a test for our, our uh, you know, elected officials. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it should be <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and the test, I don't need to see taxes. I need to see your test score on the uh, the, the running the system vote there. <laughs> I, I, I had a government professor, and he literally said to us every day that there are a bunch of idiots and conners running the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And I, I agree with him. These people should be tested. They should. Have they do stuff that's unconstitutional all the freaking Every time. Day. Absolutely. Yeah. Overstepping authority all the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys want to put more laws so they can overstep them again? Yeah. It's not yeah. working. Because it appeases us and makes us feel like we're in charge. I don't think, the, I don't think voting charge, works at all. We're not. We're no. not in charge at all. We know who's in charge. Again, it's green privilege. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, they, they buy their way in. That's, a, uh, they, that's the sound bite from this show. I, I kind of want to it's, it's boycott a vote one year. Everybody said no, we're not doing it. See what happens. Hmm. Just kind of piggyback off something. People in power would still be doing their thing. Right. Well, that would show who's going on, right? Whoever's yeah. actually voting. Yeah. It's weird. Like, well, what is this for everyone? <laughs> I feel like I'm on a fence about certain things because I feel like the whole voting system. Period. I feel like it's kind of an act of insanity for people that this whole system wasn't created for, for us to vote for or against it because it wasn't created for us anyway certain groups of people, I feel like. I feel like there should be, this may sound crazy to most people, but separate system, government systems for different na nationalities of people here in this country. Oh, you mean bring it back local? Uh, Maybe so. Yeah, because I mean locally that would make work. States yeah, right. that's actually, yeah, states, states right. right. That, that is actually, you're touching on the original oh, yeah. founding yeah. concept was that, that local government should be where the power that's was, not federal. They were very anti-federal government. Yes. And it's uh, very reason. very culturally different from state to state, from city to city, from municipality to municipality. That makes absolute sense. Yep. And as a libertarian, I've got to say, I always throw my vote away. Uh, yeah. Every every time I've ever voted, uh, it, it, Most was, of us do. it was outside of the two-party <laughs> system. Uh, and, and the idea that there's an A or B choice for that is, is to Silly me... Madness pretty absurd yeah. uh, but but it's always about the the moral foundation of the candidate uh, and isn't that a novel concept I will finish the show with this comment because we have to go to your performance I want to say if we are choosing the lesser of two evils evil always wins absolutely so there you go all right taking it home mr. Billy what are you gonna play for us and where can we find it take it away all right, we're Officer God. We're going to play a song called Angels of Ice, and you can find us at www.officergodmusic.bandcamp.com.
like the ocean pulled by gravity, but guided by something else. Come on. Na -na 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 Awesome performance, killer harmonies. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Good song. What was it called again? Angels of Ice. Angels of Ice, yes. And where can they find it? You can find that on officergodmusic.bandcamp.com. Yes, or just mail me money and I will make a CD and uh, send you a Blu-ray player. I'll open the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> another fun show, another great topic. You guys, make sure you check for all the places you can find us, theartofdispute.com. Hop over there, check it out. We'll be back next week with another awesome topic. See you then.